question B, chapter 10, question 3B. Now assume that n equals 4 for the first sample and n equals 7 for the second. Again, calculate the two sample variances and the pooled variance. You should find that the pooled variance is closer to the variance for the larger sample. So what we're going to do, we're, we don't need to calculate this again. The, su the sum of squares hasn't changed. The size of the sample hasn't changed. So here, the variance is 12. That doesn't change because the numbers haven't changed. For the other, draw a line there to separate A from question B. We do have to recalculate this though because the sample size has changed. So we're going to take the variance is equal to 18, but now n minus 1 is 7 minus 1, it's 6. So that's now 3. We're going to calculate that pooled variance going to take sum of squares 1 plus sum of squares 2, divide by the degrees of freedom of 1, which is 3, plus the degrees of freedom of the second, which is 6. Remember that degrees of freedom equals n minus 1. Um, I guess I should have put this in here. Let me just do that. 36, and this one's 18. So it's the same formula as we used up here. So on top we've got, again, 54, because the sum of squares haven't changed. What has changed is the sample size divided by nine, which is equal to six. And lo and behold, just as predicted in the question, the pooled variance is closer to the variance of the sample that has the larger sample size. So 6 is closer to 3 than it is to 12. And that's because the degrees, the, the sample size over here is 7 and the sample size over here is 4. As those two sample sizes get further and further apart, they get more and more different, you're going to see more and more difference uh, in the pooled variance from being in the dead center to being closer to one of the sample variances.